No. Attention. We all need attention, isn't it? So, and traffic controller more than anyone else. But now, usually we lose attention very fast. I mean, William James said, founder of modern psychology, that we cannot, no one can maintain their attention more than a few seconds on, the, on, this, on a given object. And well, that doesn't seem to be quite the case. Here, you see on top of that, a less adept, I mean, someone who has trained a little bit, but not very much. Uh, and then when you do tests of attention, you have to be very vigilant, and there's some task, and each time you make a mistake, then it records a mistake. So in the beginning, you are quite there, and uh, you're very sharp, and you don't make much mistakes, but soon you get tired and start making more and more and more mistakes. It's quite a challenging task. But the practitioners, you know, they go on, and this is just the, was the initial studies, but now they w went on for you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, without any decline of the quality of their attention. And they don't even feel tired, feeling like getting instead of flow. And I even once sent my laptop to someone who was in retreat, and I, I, I given him the, I tell him how to do, and I said, first we do the 15 minutes test, then the 45 minutes, and then later you can repeat the 45 minutes. I know, and he started it, and he said, and came back after two hours, and said, oh, you finished? I thought you were going to do now, one now, one in this afternoon. He said, oh, I did all of them as a row. So actually, he did 90 minutes of vigilance test, and his last test was just as good. So that means he said, well, what's the problem with this? <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a faculty that is, has been trained. Next one. Now, this is areas of the brain which are all related to attention. And especially here, you see that in the meditators, the attention areas are so much more active than in the controls which are down there. Next one. Yes, short-term training. So now we also thought, okay, fine for those meditators, but what about if we do a few months? So a study was done in the... Next slide, please. In the... Um, with employees of a biotech company in Madison, and they are quite overworked. And in the winter, in November, they get a flu shot so that they still come to work and don't take excuses. <laughs> and so they volunteered for three months of meditation of 30 minutes a day with every Saturday some kind of course. And then there was a weight uh, list control group which said, okay, please come to the lab every week and we'll give you the training after. So just to compare so now, after three months already, if you look at on anxiety with sort of psychological tests and questionnaires, there's a, a time two means uh, after the three months, and you can see that the time one, they were quite similar. Time two is a big difference in less anxiety. The next one. So now this is about this right, left side activation I mentioned before, that, that baseline resting curve. As you can see, at time two, uh, there's a big difference uh, between the, the meditators uh, uh, and, the, and the controls. The, the meditators being the, I mean, those with three months of meditation, this is the right thing. It's, it's, it's a big difference. And so ne ne next, next slide. Now, interestingly enough, when you give them those vaccine shots, uh, those who did the three months meditation, the immunological response was much better, 20% better. That means their immunological system was stronger uh, than the control group whose vaccine only work once out of two or whatever, I don't know exactly the number, but, but, but there's a big difference, a significant difference in the immune system. That's only three months, 30 minutes a day. The next one. Cortisol is another way to measure the stress level. You can measure that in the saliva. saliva. And the, here this is with experienced meditators, the blue, the blue slots, and they were actually engaged in a three years retreat and taking saliva from early morning till evening for three days every month. And then there's four times less saliva than, than age match controls. Next one. Now again, we, this idea of outer condition, how they influence uh, our well-being. And we usually put all our hopes and fears in outer conditions. Now, if I had all that, I would be happy. And of course, it's not the case. First, having all that to be happy. You know, that formula itself shows there's something fishy there because having all that, first, if you don't have it, you are not, no more happy. If you don't have it all, you are no more happy either. So it won't work. So now, but still we'd say, okay, 
you know, if I had, if you see people who are very rich, very famous, very, very powerful, very strong, very beautiful, and so, and still miserable, you hear they are depression after depression, you say, what's wrong with this fellow? If I had all that, I must be happy myself. But there's, there's nothing to do with happiness. So now, yes, let's see that. So being wealthy, next slide, please. Yes, another one. Okay, now the GDP increased, gross national product, three times increase in the United States, between 46 and 96, the gross national happiness, slight decrease. So, well, of course, if you are below the line of poverty, then, of course, an increase of resources will change your life, if you can feed your children and so forth, security. That's definitely a big increase of, of reported happiness. But behind that, be, be, uh, beyond that, Triple, quadruple, no change. Next one. No marriage, a good question. <laughs> so you can just guess. Next one. Year zero, there's a peak. <laughs> right. What to do? Now next one. Next one. No comments. You recover. Even this tragic, you, you come back to a baseline. Next one. Oops, finished? Oh no. So now, you might say, okay, then what's the point of meditating? No matter what happens, you come back to the baseline. <laughs> well, it's all a matter of baseline. Mind training changes your baseline where you come back. The ups and downs of life are always going to happen. There will be very happy moments, sad moments, and there will be this ups and downs. But are you coming up and down here or here? So that's what meditation can change. It changes your traits. Next one. So external factor, limited effect. All the sociological factors connected with happiness, you know, education, health, you know, there's 4,500 studies if we do meta-analysis. They do matter, they do make a difference, whether you have a job or not, all these things. But when you aggregate, overall, they only contribute to 15% of your reported happiness by all kinds of standards. So the rest of it, up to you. So people differ in their style, and this, this, this position can be changed. Even they are quite stable if you don't do anything about it. Next one. So meditation has demonstrable effect on the, on the brain and they represent one of the few ways in which purely mental training has been demonstrated to have robust impact on brain function. Next one. Ah, this is one of the meditators who went to the lab. Next one. And the monks running away from the monastery, from the, not from the monastery, from the lab. <laughs> okay, now next ones. And then we can go quickly through those. So you, you please go on. Those are the different, because also people often reproach meditators, you don't care about others. Nice to meet on compassion, what about compassion in action? So all those are part of what we were mentioning in the beginning that Tenzin Lak kindly said about the projects we have developed. We built 16 small clinics in Tibet and Nepal, and quite a big one. In, so this, this is also a program for the mother and child. We did a survey in Eastern Tibet 200 families, one mother out of two lost a child in their life. And then so we do, this is a, a TB patient with bone disease, bone TB in the tent. Uh, she had only a, a 13 years old daughter, all mother, the husband had died. She would never had got up. So with intervention next year, here she is with her daughter. And so all those health and education program really makes a difference because sometimes there's no, no, nothing. So here, if any of you is a doctor and wants to come to help us, don't expect that the patients are going to be in the waiting room. They all want to be there. They don't want to miss anything of the consultation. So that's an elderly people's uh, village, and then next year we transform that into this, and then the next one, please. You know, ah, but this is Mrs. Happy. <laughs> next one. <laughs> you know, they're all the happiest person in the world. Okay, now this one, this is, a, this is a friend of mine, he's a Tibetan doctor, a traditional doctor, but not, not, not an ophthalmologist and not a dentist. 